What is up YouTube fam, Robbie C here. Today we have distance driver prototypes. And if you know me, you guys know that I throw so far. Like that's like what I'm known for is how far I throw a disc. So we're gonna throw these distance driver prototypes and see how they stack up, what's making the bag, what's not, because y'all, and in the bag. Hopefully coming real soon. So before we dive in, how are you today, Jeremiah? Are you having a good one? So catch me if I fall. Okay, no, but for real, uh, distance drivers are in the bag, and I don't know about you guys, but as someone who tries to have a very balanced game, a lot of times when people are getting into disc golf, I have heard several stories of folks who are like, they get in and they're very, very forehand dominant because when you're throwing the forehand, this is most like other athletic motions, things like that. And so you can get a lot more, you feel like at least, you're getting a lot more spin and power out of the forehand. So you end up throwing a lot more forehands over time. And if you don't start that way and you start as a predominantly backhand player, over time you learn like a backhand turnover, especially as a right-handed player when a hole happens to shape left or right. Because of this imbalance, as it continues to grow, if you don't end up developing one skill over the other, you end up with possibly a bag that is a little more awkward or you have to have more discs in your bag than you maybe want to carry because your back and your forehand are so different from one another. In fact, I know it's a pretty common take for lots of people in the disc golf community for some reason to hate Joel Freeman. But one thing that I really respect about Joel Freeman is that every disc in his bag, he prides himself on, he throws it forehand and backhand. Like if he cannot throw it both ways, he does not put it in the bag. For me personally, I don't throw crazy far with a backhand, but my forehand has developed a lot over time and foundation all-stars recently i think opened up people's eyes to the idea that like i have a pretty good forehand which doesn't always help me in progressing my game as far as i wanted to earlier this year i made the decision to pull race and destroyers out of my bag and i decided to put raiders in there and i've been really really happy with the raiders and how they're flying for me i have a couple really sick raiders i've got this venom dyed hybrid raider that i've had for a long time several years in fact uh before i joined team innova i was in conversations with joining team dynamic and uh this was the raider i was bagging at the time and then i have these two you know obviously you got to have them balancing each other out with the renegon and the sharingan and a fusion raider and a lucid raider this is one of the ricky uh raiders that got dropped when he joined the team so she's pretty stable I'm trying to get this Fusion Raider to be a lot more flippy, but it's taking some time. So while it's in the process of beating in and I'm really grateful with Raiders, when I go to throw these on a backhand, the difference between all three of these Raiders is, well, noticeable between these two, but I would say that this is the flippiest, this is straight, but still is gonna fade every time, and this one's fading a good bit. I don't even think about throwing my defenders on a backhand because they are just sheer beefcakes. But I have to have the defenders because my forehand is significantly better. So I can put more power into the forehand and because I'm not getting enough spin uh, on the forehand, you need that higher stability when you're throwing faster forehands because this spin causes balance that doesn't let the disc turn over. It's a whole other video that we're doing soon. Thus bringing us to the story of today and why we have these. Because while I eventually wanna have, especially this guy, beat in enough that it's like real flippy so that when I'm throwing forehands, I'm having to go like, if I wanna go like forehand raider, I'm usually having to go this one because this will get flippy and touchy and things like that. This will be my easy flip up easy turnover like really flippy but it's not there right now and that is the big weakness of mold minimalization is if you do something crazy like i did where you pull an entire set of molds out of your bag and put fresh ones in there well you don't necessarily unless you buy used ones or you like have been working on it on the side you don't have beat in one did have a beat in one but dakota unfortunately ripped it straight into a lake and for justice i didn't mean to make it justice but i also ripped his cicada straight into the lake. So eventually these are gonna beat in, but we have to have alternative options. And that is where I'm really grateful because I had two companies actually send out prototypes, which is really great. One of them I actually got in December, which was the Royal Box, and really grateful to Latitude 64 for putting me on the list to uh, get one of those Royal Boxes. And I'll be honest, I filmed a whole video just 
unboxing these and throwing them. And because we have these fancy new mics, there are a couple extra steps that I have to take in order to get them like working properly. And I just straight up failed that day. I was very distracted and uh, didn't do the mics. So there was no sound on that video. And the whole point of the video was like live reactions. So can't really fake that again. Couldn't come up with a great idea on how to use the disc otherwise. The Brave just came out at the point of where I'm filming this video. I think the Brave came out like last week uh, or it's coming out this week. I don't really know. But the Strive is set to come out in March. And I think the Strive is a distance driver that more people are going to be talking about because it has enough flip to it already straight out the box. And this Royal plastic, uh, this Royal Grand plastic feels really amazing. I think truly some of the best feeling plastic on the market. So I have this currently slot in the bag, but I have literally not played a round with it since realizing none of my Raiders were flippy enough to actually throw it. So this would be a great like first round test with that. The other company that sent me some prototypes was Hooligan Discs, who famously made the Yeet um, and the Vibe are their first two discs. Who's manufacturing the discs? Hooligan was being manufactured by Lone Star Discs, but in fact, now they're being manufactured by a... This YouTuber does not have the right to reveal who is currently manufacturing the discs. This is not public information, but it will be made public one day in the near future for you guys to enjoy. So I hope that you enjoy this nice air horn and hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Crazy, right? <laughs> I can't believe it either. So I've got two. The Vibe was one of their flippy drivers that they were using in the past, this white one, and we have this brown one. I think this could be competing with the Strive, which is really cool. And then this distance driver, I don't know that it has a name yet, but it is supposed to be, it has like actually a, like a little bit of a bead on the outside, which is kind of cool. They said that it was very destroyer-like. So we're gonna be comparing this to the Raiders today. Not that I, I'm keep my mind open, but not that I'm expecting this to bump the Raider out, but the Raider is currently what I'm throwing in that slot. So that'll give you a side-by-side, -side, and then we'll be throwing the Strive alongside the Vibe. Sound good? Let's see what we got. So first four hands of the day, hole is, it says like 300 something feet. Uh, it is the basket sitting out there. Just gotta hang it out over the road. The key here is you're okay flare skipping off the road. You just wanna make sure that you don't go too high and let it carry in. We're gonna go Raider first for first forehand of the day. I'll be a little more familiar with it. Okay, a lot of power. That's fine. Let's see. All right, green's got some stability to it. I like that, big flare skip. Perfect, she's parked. I like that, and then we're gonna try this metal flake gray one. Much more of a bullet. That's clean, that's clean. A lot lower of release. They feel really good on that initial shot. I wondered if the bead on the outside, cause like a bead on a distance driver is an interesting choice. I think the Passion has a bead on the outside. Didn't bother me. Didn't bother me on a forehand at all. Now does the road actually play OB here? That's, you know, I would say that probably depends on who you play with. It's definitely gonna give us more of a putt when we play scared and don't actually like trust it over the road. Now well, this is interesting because video wise, if I want this for y'all to see this like as a scoreboard or like a contest between one to the other, both of the unnamed prototypes coming in real clutch ended up really close to the basket. I mean, this is close enough for gray that metal flight gray, tapping. I don't think green's much worse. Yeah. Our next hole is 466 feet away. It is, uh, if you go over those railroad ties or like the power poles or whatever they are, uh, straight towards those three trees that are kind of sitting by what looks like a ditch over there. 466 feet. You may think OB baseball field to the right. I don't think it's a good idea to flow. flow. I don't think it's a good idea to flow. I don't think. Why is that so hard to say? I don't think it's a good idea to throw the flippy driver here, Robbie. The dentist is taking over. So we're gonna go with the Strive first. And one thing that I'm trying to work on as we're hitting, we're feeling a lot more power as you saw in the Defending Bedanza video. When we hit that origin, it burned all the way over and it came out of my hand and I would have thought that I had like grip locked it. 
to do that. But nope, she came out flat, or she actually came out on the hyzer in front of me and then she turned all the way over. So talking with the coach that I'm, when I'm doing this throw that I'm not letting the pocket collapse, I'm maintaining the pocket and the arm integrity while still throwing with that much power. We'll see just how flippy they are. I'm gonna put them on a decent amount of hyzer because worst case scenario, they're not gonna stand up and they're gonna ride straight. That's always the key. If you're throwing anything and you don't know what it does, throw it on hyzer. Because if it's flippy and you throw it on hyzer, it's gonna stand up and it's gonna ride straight or even turn over if it's super flippy, right? If I throw it on hyzer and it's really overstable, it's just gonna do exactly what we would expect and stay on hyzer. Yeah. That stride feels so good, dude. That stride feels good. We're going with the, this one's pop toppy. That's a pop top vibe right there. Okay. That one, I think we legit hit better. At least it felt like we hit it better. I'm afraid of grip locking it into the, the, the fence over there. That's why we, we hit it well, but not hit it amazing. This one's not as pop toppy. The vibe, not as flippy as the Strive on first rip, but it did just land in some rocks, so. Oh, that one we didn't hit at all. Yeah, that one we hit real poor. Not a great throw there, not a great throw there. Welcome to the backhand struggles. So what's interesting here is the white one definitely released the worst, but it's right here in line with the others. So interesting. We're going Renegon 330 feet into a straight headwind. Yeah. And I'm super deep. Whoops, did not anticipate that. I thought the headwind would slow us down. Uh, okay. Big scoop. And that one is also super deep. Okay, guess we're gonna come off of it here. Don't do it to me, bus. Hey! That was the right distance. We just had to, we just had to take some off. We just had to take some off. This was, there's that wind, look at that. That was gray, Renegon, deep and past. Unnamed distance driver. The green one be zooming, they're trading. Nope. Yeah. Look, if you come to this course and you play the longs, Oliver Park, you come to the longs, this is why you do it. You come to this hole right here, 600 and like 30 something feet to the basket. It's way off in that corner. Nice little area of rocks. Let's see, we got both. We got a vibe, we got a vibe. We got overstable, overstable. We got this and we got the strive. We'll go overstable first, get the ribs and then see what happens. So I'm gonna try to throw the overstables on flat to a little bit of ante, just so you can see them flex out. They're all gonna land short and left. Nope. Let it slip out. Didn't actually throw it. That makes sense. Super short. Nope. Better. Overstable. What you would, what you would expect out of these better we got a better hit on that one which is why i held straighter longer yeah nothing crazy here we go we're going with sharingan raider nope i'm just not sitting in the shot long enough to like actually get anything out of these. This is the kind of stuff that you can work on form change, you can do all that, and then it's like rubber hits the road right here. And you just get heartbroken. Let's give, uh, let's give Brown Vibe a chance. That was better. We put it on a lot of hyzer and it never flexed out of it. So we're gonna try to go flatter with this white one. Yeah. There we go. 
get her over on some Anheuser and that vibe doesn't come out of it. That's nice. If you're looking for that understable option, what's interesting between those two is that the brown one, definitely more overstable and something that Hooligan even said when they sent them to me was like, I think they said they have four blends coming. So anyone can find the type of vibe that they're looking for. Let's see how the stripe flies. Yeah. Okay. So what's interesting is I feel like if I would have thrown the Strive and the white one, the same that I threw the brown one, absolute bombs. But because we cooked them both over, it didn't work. We got three really not great hits on these. We didn't sit in the shots at all. Uh, so still got a good bit of work to do here. I'm here for the frustration uh, and here keeping it, keeping it real uh, because I know there are a lot of people who try to change change stuff in their game. I can understand people's frustration when it's like, oh, Joey just started playing and now Joey in a year is better than me and I've been playing for 10 years. As someone who was when I, was when I was introduced to the sport, I was told by a faster disc straight up. Uh, so I went and bought a nuke and in order to get that to fly, I was told to just yam crank the lawnmower and throw a disc like this so throw a disc like this so i got so averse to like any form of proper like pocket or anything like that so that just and i didn't change anything about how i threw a disc for eight years <sighs> nope didn't hit it well at all but i got up there oh nope gotta hold on to it dennis that's what. Doesn't matter if we come around really hard if we can't hang on to the frisbee. Ah, like that. Still, I'm losing the shot. All these are coming out so soft on the backhand because I'm losing the shot. I'm not even like trying to plant and I like you can't. You cannot form a proper brace when that's your grass. I'm just, I'm trying to brace and I'm trying to let the speed of the hand really come through and fly through. And when I'm doing that, my grip strength is not at a place to actually hold on to it. So it's just fluffing out right here, which isn't great. Whenever we go to talk about distance, the comment sections get real coachy and I'm great with that. Like I appreciate the advice. I appreciate the insight. It's not a lack of understanding what at this point, we're on like the, the plateau. Here's me on the side of the mountain. I can see where I'm trying to get. And I know what I, like I, I see it. It's just physically getting my body to be like, hey, gotta move that right hand. The hole's right there. The, the handle spot right there. You just, just gotta get there. Just gotta move it. Why aren't you moving? So it's just time, just takes time. See? Like, I know there, those little like standstill shots, I know I'm doing right. Not that I'm doing them excellent, but I know that I'm hitting them well. I've just got to get my body to actually do these when I'm like giving a full run up. There it is. Is that in the bucket? Whoo! I guess we just went right behind it. Cause I thought for real there was a chance we were about to dunk it from all the way out here. All right, so final thoughts coming through the discs. Unnamed prototype distance drivers with the overstable option, very destroyer-like. If you're looking for an overstable option, these are both very, very good. Personally, I am good with my Raiders right now. I like what they're doing. I like that I can step up to the Defender. Still really, really solid. If you're toying around, I know something that even when I first went to Raiders like and talked with, I talked with a guy who throws like 600 something and I had Raiders and Destroyers in the back then and we threw Raiders for a little bit and he was like, hey man, I really think you should consider like bagging the Raider and throwing the Raider. You just get more distance out of them. So if you've been hard stuck on the Destroyer because you're like, I have to have that type of disc in your bag, this could be a really good option. When it comes down to this battle, this is definitely the slot that I was the most curious about and seeing how they would fly, shake out in this video. The brown one, not as necessarily a big fan of this one. I think this one, because of the dominess of it and all of that, it flies much closer 
to these. It just has more stability. I could easily see this white one making it in the bag. I think that most likely the Strive will end up holding the spot just because really two major reasons. We talk about mold mineralization. I have heard rumors shifting around that in this year, we're going to be seeing possibly the Royal line, uh, I forget what they call it, like Supreme Plastic for DD, Supreme Raiders. And if Supreme Raiders come out, then this could have a really good hand feel. The Vibe, I really loved the first run of the Vibes. This run, super, super good. I'm gonna be giving away this one to the Birdie Fam for sure. I'm always grateful when companies are willing to send our prototypes because for me, my bag doesn't really fluctuate too often. I like to find stuff, stick with it, try not to change too often because once again, I'm trying to play tournaments this year. So I want consistency through the bag, but I love being able to test plastic because I have a very, I think I have a healthy understanding of where the, the majority of the disc golf body is. I just think that there is a much larger population of disc golfers that we're just not even thinking about. And so finding discs that work for them has always been my passion. Hope you have a great day. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for watching. If you haven't, I'll go ahead and say it on this one. I would love you to be able to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, support what we're doing here on the channel. But in the meantime, hope you have an amazing rest of your day. Please make it fantastic for someone else too. But for now, we're going to leave you with the birdie.